Okay, let's talk about generating functions. So what is a generating function and why do we want to know about it? I think a nice way to think about it is treating it purely as a convenient trick to record a bunch of numbers, open probabilities associated with some integers or counts. So let's imagine a dice. It is a good looking dice, but it's not perfect. And the probability of having a number is not exactly one over six. And we can write down the probability of having number 1 as p1, number 2 as p2, and so on. Okay, now pause the video and think about the following question. Can you create a mathematical function that contains all the information about these probabilities so that we can recover all probability values from p1 to p6 anytime we want? Okay, if you think about it, it may be clear that you need a way to isolate these values from each other somehow. Probably the simplest way to do that is using a polynomial by associating each number with different powers of the polynomial. So it goes like this. So p1 goes with x, p2 goes with x squared, and so on. At this point, we don't really care about the roots of the polynomial, or we don't even care about how this function looks like. All we care about is we just want to keep these numbers safely inside this polynomial function. And now you have a generating function for these probabilities. So can this function speed out or generate the probability values back to us? Um, let's think about it. Let's first focus on p1, which seems easiest. So how can you get back p1 from this function? Consider this function as a machine with a bunch of buttons you can press and this, each button corresponds to some mathematical operations. So again, pause the video and think about it for a moment. And yes, we can use calculus here. So let's just take a derivative of gx. Okay, every term except the p1 term has x in it. So that means we can simply let x to be 0 and we have p1. So how about p2? We can take another derivative and set x to be 0. Great, uh, this means that if you want to get the value of pk, we just need to take the derivative of gx k times, evaluate it at x equal 0, and then divide with some appropriate constant. This constant is actually k factorial, and I'll let you prove it. Now we can get the probability values back from our generating function. but uh, didn't we already know them? Why do we need to go through this much work just to recover what we already know? Well, it's true that no magic happens here. Whatever you do with a generating function, it should be in principle possible without using it. But at the same time, generating function can do amazing things because it lets us apply powerful analytical tools to the whole distribution. So here is a simple example. So let's look at the first derivative of our generating function. What happens if we let x to be 1? Do you see what's going on here? We have just calculated the expected value of the dice. Another really cool thing happens when you multiply generating functions. Okay, see what happens if we square our generating function here. The lowest power of x will be 2, and you'll get p1 squared as its coefficient, right? And let's just write a few more terms. Again, just pause the video and just look at these terms. Do you see any patterns? Let's imagine the case where we throw the same dice twice and count the total number of i's. If we get two ones, the total will be 2. If you get 1 and 6, the total will be 7, right? Now think about the probability of having the total of 2. You should have 1i in both cases, so the probability will be p1 times p1. Well, this is exactly the same as the coefficient of x to the power of 2. Is this a coincidence? No, let's look at another case. To have 4 as a total, you should either have 1 and 3, or 2 and 2, or 3 and 1. Such probability is p1 times p3 plus p2 times p2 plus p3 times p1. 
which is again exactly the same as the coefficient of the x to the power of 4. So you can also notice that the power of x is always equal to the sum of the subscript in the probability values, right? So in other words, if you multiply generating functions, the resulting function will be yet another generating function, which represent the probability distribution of the sum of the values from the original generating functions. This is really cool, and this property makes counting problems really easy, and also makes generating function as a really useful tool to study random graphs with arbitrary degree distribution. So I'll just show you a simple counting example. Say you want to buy 10 candies, and there are red, blue, and green candies. Somehow, you want to have even number of red candies, more than 6 blue candies, and less than 3 green candies. How many ways are there to combine these color candies? You may want to just carefully count all the cases, but with generating functions, this can be done quite systematically. So first of all, you can represent the even number of red candies as a generating function. And then the case for the more than six blue candies as another generating function. And finally, less than three green candies means this simple generating function. Now we can multiply all these generating functions to enumerate all possible cases where we can buy candies. So now we expand this formula and all we need to do is check out what is the coefficient of x to the power of 10. This coefficient tells us how many ways there are to combine three colored candies. So uh, although we can be puzzling at first, generating functions are really cool and convenient and awesome. And we can also talk about how it can be applied to solve problems in network science in some other videos. Thank you.